All right, welcome everybody. Today is November 10th. This is another edition of Hooked on Drupal. We have the full panel, the whole CP development crew is here. Sans Dan, uh, I don't think he's been on yet. He won't, do, he won't even come to the office today. Right. Because he's, we're having a podcast. He's usually out and about. About. Um, he's from, Min- well, he lived in Minnesota, so he's kind of Canadian. Practically Canadian. Yes. yes. And uh, recently, oh, that's what I meant. It's the same state. He's isn't real it? upset. Like. <laughs> it's the same state. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Go Vikings. <laughs> well, and he was recently at a uh, symphony training on the on the west coast. So th- the guy gets around, and he's getting all geared up for Drupal eight, which is also conveniently uh, the topic of this podcast. Uh, I'm Shane Siebel, the marketing guy, and these folks here will introduce themselves soon. Mm. All right, I'm Chris Keller. I'm a developer. I'm Hillary Lewandowski. I'm a developer. I'm Brad Sersnack. I'm a developer. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. The support group is, is complete. So all things Drupal 8 is our conversation topic today. Um, so they actually announced a release date, November 19th. 19th. And we need to go back and double check the facts, but Chris maintains that he, he may have predicted this down to the day. I'm pretty sure I said November something in the teens. Okay. So loyal podcast viewers, I'm sure you're rewatching that episode <laughs> uh, you know, even now. Uh, but go back and check. We will as well because uh, we like to award uh, accuracy. We should have checked before this episode. I know. Yeah. But... Excuse us. Just... Okay, I think that's it there. Um, so That's the future setting. <laughs> that is the future portal. When is Drupal 8 going to launch? Oh, it's not. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Well, wow. it, it says March fifteenth, two thousand sixteen. Oh my gosh! In there. Is that, are you sure? Is that what you're seeing? It, 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 from uh, I can see how from your angle it would look. Because oh, a yeah. six can also be yeah. a nine if you right. Yeah. Flip it or I think it's, nineteen. It's, that's a long time. Is that November twenty second, twenty fifteen? Wow, that's coming soon. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's right around fast. the corner. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's a little bit creepy. So I'm to sure it's either one of you're in on, on Dree's uh, mind, you know, from, <laughs> from, from the inside. Like a picture of you, and then, and then like, a, like a splash that says, he was right. Yeah, <laughs> holding the check <laughs> and a candy bar. Or we'll something. have to frame it and yeah. put it in a plaque. But anyway, it's actually arriving. Um, you know, there was that countdown site that would just kind of, like, change erratically mm-hmm. for, guess, for a yeah. while. And then finally, like, the 19th, that's it. Uh, have your party. So, and we actually, conveniently, we had a, a party scheduled. Uh, we didn't know it was a party. It was just going to be a meetup that Hillary was going to be schooling WordPress folks on what Drupal is. And now uh, they're going to get the full Drupal 8 party explosion experience. They're um, all going to convert. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Once yeah. they see how amazing it is to be right. a Drupaler. Once they experience the figure eights, uh, there's, no, <laughs> there's no going back. Interesting fact uh, WordPress uh, had some sort of official announcement that they have gone over 25% of the internet, um, and they seem fairly excited about that. Though okay. 57% of the internet doesn't use a CMS, so let's just throw that out <laughs> there. Okay. So 25% of the internet, and then what percent of, is that, was that it? 25% of the internet is composed of WordPress sites? Yeah, of all websites okay. are WordPress. And most of them are like, two-page spam bot sites or like I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say something like that. no that wasn't you no, no. but in order so, to capture 25% of the market there has to be a decent amount of WordPress pornography sites right you would you would <laughs> you would suspect as much and yeah. then what percentage of CMS is like they probably have it would even be a greater percentage of the CMS market share I've, yes I've seen statistics where they are like 40 or 50 something like that yeah but Drupal is satisfied at being the 2% crown jewel of open source CMSs, right? And with 8 coming out, um, do you think that's going to change the I don't know, share Probably of adoption? Not. No. Probably not. Not no. at first, at least. They're oh. trying to make Drupal 8 a little more user-friendly. 
but it's always been more developer friendly. Yeah, and it's it's the higher end site marketplace, right? I mean, yeah, and once you go to WordPress and you find the the majesty of the loop and that you can change your CSS files right there in the back end, you're like, I don't. Why would I use anything else? So, <laughs> right. Right. I think a Drupal wants uh, quality over quantity, probably. So, like they want the enterprise sites, the bigger, the bigger fish, the bigums. Yeah, very good. Well, yeah, and that's the story we're sticking to. I mean, uh, we we've turned down a couple WordPress clients, and they came back, and they were like, uh, "Okay, let's do the Drupal thing. we we trust you." So. Um, yeah, we, we've fully, you know, drunk the Kool Aid, drank it, drunk it, and drank, <laughs> and now that's what we do. That's what we do. So Drupal eight um, as a new platform. I know there's been some experimenting going on. Um, how is it going to change uh, the development cycle here? Are we going to adjust drastically to doing Drupal eight sites? Yes, we don't know yet yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, there's some new ways to like build out your site. You could use Composer to like download everything, mm -hmm. and it could change our workflow a lot. But yeah. I think initially we'll stick with probably what we what we do now. Um, yeah. I'm sure there'll be a little bit of uh, trouble spots along the way. Yeah, and yes. our build tools, we had to switch like three or four lines in order to to really get Drupal 8 working, so it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, yeah, for George Jetson, that's that's quite a, a, a feat. You changed, you pushed three buttons to, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's impressive. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of effort. So we're also uh, looking towards the upgrade process. So there's a lot of Drupal 7 sites out there for sure. I have no idea what the saturation of Drupal 6 sites still is, but with Drupal 8 being formally announced, Drupal 6 has a end-of-life deadline, right? Yeah, February 24th or 25th in, in the 2016 year. In the, yes, in the, in the year of our Lord 2016, <laughs> February, Drupal 6, game over. What, is that, what does that mean? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think there'll be any more security like fixes and updates yeah. for contrib or core. Yeah. So if I any mean, more holes are found. Yeah, Drupal's not. They're just the like, sorry, it. yeah. like, sorry, it's up to you. The contrib maintainers could still release stuff. I think. Yeah, but it's up they're to not. But nobody's they don't committed to, to it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it means that if you built a site in two thousand and eight and did nothing to it for eight years, then you might have some trouble beginning in March of 2016. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when did Drupal 6 come out anyway? That, was like it 08, really 08? Yeah. Something like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's mm -hmm. you, you've made it, you know, practically a decade on one uh, not bad. platform. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. It may be time to upgrade. Um, so, you know, help me out. I mean, is, a, is an upgrade really an upgrade or it was always a migration? Like, if you were going to go from 6 to 7... Like, were you practically building a new site anyway? Yeah, you're building yeah. a new site and migrating content if you can. Yeah. yeah or just paste, copying and pasting it depending on your budget. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so Drupal 6 owners out there, what do you think their options are? Like, is there any reason to bother with Drupal 7 if you want to hold on to your site? Well, we've got two Drupal 6 clients. One of them we're building a 7 site right now, and one of them we're going to go to 8. Uh, either late this year or uh, early next year. So uh, it really uh, depends on when and what you want. What would be the big compelling reason, like, why go Drupal 8? Is there, like, a feature that's like, oh, if I, I might as well have that? It's kind of difficult to... Um, to put into terms what's cool about Drupal 8, but there's a lot that's cool about Drupal 8. So. Yeah. I guess the, the inline editing is the most visible thing. For a user experience yeah. once you get it deployed. Um, so, so people do have some options. If they're moving from 6, 7 is still pretty mature. It's going to be supported for, like, I mean, years, right? I mean, is that how do, how do we know when 7 is end of life? Did they change that? or it, it, Usually it's when the next major yeah. version comes out. They phase out. Yeah, so when 9 comes out, so 7, seven will, will get phased okay. out. Support. 
So nine's probably about three years out. I think they talked about like changing that a little bit, but I don't know if they ever came to. Okay. Uh, I saw something out there about they're like, well, PHP is going to be supported for at least three years. So, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, Drupal 7 <coughs> came out in like 2011. So if we did the um, uh, sit on your website for eight years thing, then they've got to like 2019. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're still building seven sites. We're starting to scope out the next round of sites that we're building. Drupal 8 is kind of the focus. Um, not really sure what that means for our development cycle. Um, once once you get through one, you'll know. That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the upgrade, yeah, like we actually, um, so we sponsored this OS training upgrade video series um, that's forthcoming. And they're like, well, we don't really know how to do it yet because Acquia hasn't told us. <laughs> um, you, you know, candidly, they're, they're like, yeah, we're still working on the documentation, right? So, um I mean, have we have you seen any sites that did a big migration to eight? Is that something that is out in the news at all? I haven't seen anything. No. Um, I keep seeing say, things that say like, "Oh, there's early Drupal eight adapters," but I've never seen a link like, "Here's an example of yeah. that early adapter." There was like one thing in the drop, and uh, it was very much like the migrate module where you had to write a whole bunch of stuff in order to make like a six site sing and eight. And yeah. That never really appeals to me, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean the, the approach, it sounds like the, the, the best approach is a, you're going to do a complete rebuild and then figure out how to migrate all the content mm -hmm. and take care of your, link structure and stuff so you don't get too big a, yeah. a hit. The, there's a migration built into Drupal 8 to go from 6 to 8, like to bring your content over. But last time I checked, it didn't work that great. And I, Hillary was saying probably you have to have very clean content mm. to make it work anyway. So you might end up not being able to use that depending on how far along it is when they launch. So there could be a lot of manual work regardless yeah and if you have dirty content like all of those drupal porn sites <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wordpress porn sites uh, drupal doesn't yeah do, they wouldn't stick no. to that um so <laughs> and, and actually brad and i were talking recently like we had um uh had a little back and forth about migration you know being something that um people who are sitting on really large sites they kind of know um i have a crap load of content and it's really important um, of course, I'm going to upgrade or whatever, but um, how do I get there? And some vendor who shall not be named, <coughs> they uh, claim that they could do an instantaneous migration. Like, you know, so it just like stripped. Um, like they have this platform that basically does a, it's almost like a flat file version of the site. And they just like take it all in. And then you could like slowly come in and create editable regions. But just like transfers it instantaneously uh didn't work so well for oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um so like what kind of things do people need to consider to, to size up the effort when they're when they're looking at an upgrade migration well we, yeah when we take a look at a site we do an automated content audit and we and we say like these are the pages that you have, like these are the URLs that people can hit on your site. And then we'll synthesize that into, hey, these are the content types that you have. So you've got like page or blog post or event or things like that. And we'll count like how many of each of those that they have. If you have like 10 pages or something, it doesn't make sense to write a script to, to import all those because you can copy and paste faster than you can write a script in that circumstance. But if you have 600 blog posts you'd probably want to import those um, and then it's a matter of subdividing it even further for each each type of content so an event you know is going to have a start and an end uh, a location a description stuff like that so we'll draw out the types and then um, hope really hard that the uh, uh, original content has that stuff there and if it doesn't then it doesn't get imported but it's a matter of uh, of good architecture, that would be the, the word to, <laughs> right, to really describe right. it. Uh, and then so creating some automated tools. It sounds like there's some migration tools that are released, but you 
may have to invent your own scripts along the way to handle custom scenarios. No, there's one. It's called Feeds. That's the one. Feeds, <laughs> feeds works really well. I have written yeah. like very manual um, content migration stuff too, and that works fine too. But Feeds is so much easier and faster, yeah. and it usually feeds works really, really well. Good, yeah. And then migrating content, um, migrating a site into Drupal 8 um, is the, I don't know, the containers of content, are they going to be drastically different than what you worked with in 7? They're drastically the same. Um, okay. Uh, some of the things that were kind of custom in 7, so like in 6 you had nodes and then like a bunch of custom stuff and then in seven it was like a node is an entity and there are a bunch of other things that are entities and then in eight everything's an entity so hmm. uh, it, there's a lot of familiarity there for us um, but the way that you go about it to some extent because of the symphony stuff and all that um, uh, has changed to a degree so that's fun so Symphony changes stuff a little bit. Um, Dan, who recently went to the Symphony training, and I sat down with him for five minutes afterwards to get the, the lowdown on it. Um, and the only thing I took away was the long-term um, maintenance and upgrade of sites is going to be much more, I don't know, gradual, like the the upgrade process is just going to be kind of like a continual patching and there's not going to be these big step revisions. Um, is that true? How does that work? Yeah, that would be one of the, the main positives of going object oriented is that you can deprecate certain features mm -hmm. and make new ones. So you kind of get like a flag in your code that this is deprecated and you should update it. So you kind of get warning that you should update your code before you update to the next big revision of. And that's like a using. like a year in between zone where you get to work on replacing deprecated routines. Depends on the yeah, software. Yeah. Some some would be faster, some would be slower. It just kind of depends on when their next release is. But. Yeah. But yeah, and I guess what I'm trying to get at is like this. Um, kind of inevitable upgrade release cycle like having to do the big jump it where you rebuild and migrate it sounds to me like the goal is to get rid of that is that true i don't know if that's true it sounds wonderful yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds good like in theory good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. and maybe they'll try to do that a little bit here but i don't know yeah. Exactly. If anyone How it's said that, play out. yeah, because yeah, right. there is a branch for Drupal nine already, like oh, okay. in the Git repository. So they're they're planning on a Drupal nine. Right. Okay. Yeah. Whenever yeah, whenever Apple comes out with the next revolutionary device, and we have to figure out a way to make websites for it, then we'll know <laughs> what we want to do in Drupal nine. Yeah. Once you uh, inhale your your the iPhone the tabletop. I mean, they've they've been going small. Maybe they'll just like go the three sixty and. Uh, their customer base get, is getting older, so yeah. Yeah. they can't see the small screens anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbotron for the geriatric. <laughs> I mean, that's a cool call. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good name. That'd be the I, 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 I geriatric. <laughs> um, uh, well, in our elderly audience, we we hold you in we high esteem. Apologize and regard. Yes. for that. Uh, so. Um, Okay, so, so the upgrade paths, it sounds like some of it's going to be similar to um, Drupal upgrades of the past, um, the development cycle, you're going to be working through it, um, figuring out what's nuanced. This whole symphony thing, does that open you up to a whole new community of developers that, um, like how does that change kind of like the, the Drupal development community. Are you merging with Symphony folks or what? I think you, it helps. Do you even care? I think yeah. it helps. Like, it's hard to find a Drupal developer right now since it's a very uh, specific skill set. I mean, if you uh, can find us, like the A team, yeah, then maybe yeah. Yeah, right. you can hire but it's, us. It's hard to find like employees, <laughs> like yeah. developers, because uh, not everyone knows this stuff. And even if someone knows PHP, they still can't figure out how to. Right. <laughs> work with the Drupal site. So, um, yeah, having 
people that know Symphony be able to come in and work on a triple site is good. Yeah, and are they plentiful? Like I, I don't really know anything about it. It came out of Europe, right? It's like a France. It's, they're pretty plentiful. I, I don't know if it's any bigger than the Drupal community, but it might be a similar size, and uh, it could possibly double the size of people that could the develop a Drupal base. site. I, that's just me pulling numbers out of the air. Right. But, right. I'm <laughs> sure they're very accurate. <laughs> I mean, I pulled November 19th out of the air. Right, we're yeah, just going well. with that now. Like you, you, yeah, you don't it. even doesn't check. even need to be don't confirmed. Even check. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so so the Symphony community um, is going to augment the Drupal community and give us um, a bigger pool of expertise to, to draw from. Do they come in with a, a different approach? Like they're like, uh, you know, to versus standard fair Drupal practices. Is that I don't know different I don't, mindsets. I don't know any Symphony developers. Right. I guess I don't know enough about Symphony yet to know. Okay. To know that, I don't know if you yeah. guys. There are a lot of <coughs> folders from what Dan was showing us. Yeah, yeah. Fi there's lots of files and folders and yeah, everything's right. split out, which you don't, you know, no like that. <laughs> <laughs> if it could all just be in one file. <laughs> one file. <laughs> yeah. No, no folders in a single file. Well, I'm gonna butcher it, but I know there's. We hung out with some people in Grand Rapids that do Symphony training, and I know Dan's taken a few classes from them. It's like a like. K&P University or something like that. I, okay. I'll get it accurate. It'll be in the notes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they've been doing training for a while within uh, within that within that community. Um, and, you know, they fly all over the world hosting these events. So it sounds like there is a user base out there at a global scale. Um, and, uh, and they have been kind of layering in Drupal 8 concepts uh, for a while, but it sounds like if you came up in Symphony, the jump to doing things in Drupal 8 would be um, pretty easy. You'd be like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's just like things built on top mm -hmm. of that of that platform. Well, it's possible. The one thing to keep in mind is that uh, it's like a huge amount more code for Drupal 8 than for Drupal 7. Um, and a lot of that is symphony components and stuff, hmm. but like it's still a whole bunch of stuff that's just Drupal chilling out there. So Yeah, really specific stuff that you need to yeah. learn, yeah. so it's still be kind of difficult. But there's also like kind of, I call them professional programmers like, like Hillary who have a computer science degree <laughs> like, that understand object-oriented programming will have an easier time getting into Drupal. So not just symphony people and not just Drupal okay. people. Okay, but object-oriented. <clears throat> That, yeah, um, and I think they'd large. have a different. Um, they'd have a different approach to it. Like they'd see the problem that they want to solve, and they build object oriented solutions to that problem. Whereas a classic Drupal programmer would find the hooks and use the classic Drupal way of hooking into things and okay. finding modules and things like that. Where the the Symphony developer might stay with the objects and do things that way that makes sense it, it does and i'm okay. sure you're going to explain it um in much more detail at our drupal 8 release party also on november 19th we're being co-hosted uh by girl develop it detroit and uh, grand circus um so we have all sorts of um very fun Drupal 8 uh, anything any, we're going to have a you know number eight competition uh, in which, you know, who, who can count to eight the fastest. Oh, we're going to do that one. All puns r related to eight. You know, I just ate your Drupal 8 lunch, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's going to be badges and uh, school bus, Drupal 8 school bus uh, races uh, oh with a demolition Jeez. derby. Uh, it's going to be like really, a good time. really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to hold off. I was trying to pitch the, um, you know, the Drupal 8 human centipede, but I don't think that's going to go over very well. Yeah, let's... let's Glad I'm missing that. <laughs> let's do that next time. I mean, anything for a marketing stunt is kind of where I begin, but we'll just, we'll just pretend that one didn't happen. Um, but yeah, we definitely want uh, to find the rest of the programming and, and community and, and all these folks out there that are... You know, versed in object-oriented, if they're uh, 
ready to check out open source CMSs, this could be a really good transition point. Um, so that's my big plug for that event. Um, and then once the release comes out, uh, that is the, um, you know, the release candidates are all done as of the 19th. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll be releasing there. some as we get up to that. I said like twice a month. Yeah, put out 8 new release good. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get the traditional point release cycle. Okay. Um, well, very good. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's been in the making since 2011. Is that when, when did they start working on it? Sure. Yeah, yeah I think that, I mean, they start oh, the new God, branch yeah. as soon as, like, well before the other ones released. So, yeah, yeah they're probably working on it for a long time. Yeah. All right, and it's and it's about time that it's here. We're excited about it. Uh, we're getting up to speed. Um, looking forward to the upgrade training series um, from OS Training, and a really great uh, kickoff party. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of uh, Hooked on there's, Drupal. There's a lot of meat in this episode, and I love. Did we talk about the important around. stuff? Yeah. Well, now it's the. I mean, let's. I mean, let's bring out the standard fare. I mean, what else? Jeez. What else do you got? Because eventually the camera's just going to shut off, so right. we can trail into whatever you want now. Oh, yeah, well, now there's pressure on us. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Have you had anything good for lunch lately? Salad. It's <laughs> all we eat yeah. anymore. I got. Salad. A, I got salad. a nine or <laughs> over there. Oh no. <laughs> Oh. Does it still have Brussels sprouts in it? Oh, it does. Oh, you have a, it's really nine days old, and you're going to eat it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm honor bound. <laughs> I've got the last of those stuffed peppers from the last crack on Thursday. Good. Those for lunch. are really good. Thank you. What did you use for the meat? Like the fake meat? Is it's it called meat? Beyond Beef. Yeah. Beyond, Beyond Beef. Beyond Beef. Beyond Beef. Beyond Beef. Beyond Beef. Beyond Beef.